and welcome back, lovely people. The Big Bang. Back time, I did my own film on it. You have sent so many interesting comments and so much creationism out there, it's driving me crazy. Let's look at the science. So, of course, one of the big things everybody asks is, how did it all start? Where did it come from? Well, this is a really good question, and it's worth exploring the contemporary science of the creation of everything. So in our wonderful and strange world, there is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is all about weirdness, where particles can pop into our plane of reality, and I choose these words very carefully, and pop out randomly. So these weird particles pop into existence, often as pairs, boop, boop, entangled, they exist for a second and then annihilate each other. But here's the twist. So imagine for a moment, particles are popping into existence all over the place, as they are right now. And two of them pop into existence at the moment the universe is expanding. The theory is that quantum particles, entangled particles that normally pop up and then annihilate each other, if they pop up and then expand, they're trapped. And those particles, because they're trapped by extreme expansion, start to exist in our reality. This all sounds completely mad. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get hundreds of, it was God. Well, it was amazing. I don't know who it was, if she had anything to do with it, but let's stick with me for a minute. So these particles are now so far apart that they start to just be particles and enough of them start to form the baby particles of our universe and stable atoms start forming like hydrogen and helium and all the way up to carbon, mainly us. So we are really part of the Big Bang. But here's the really interesting thing. In a great article in Wired and in the New York Times, scientists are looking at relationships. And now to get back to the title of this film, a question. What is the relationship between a squished turtle and a dinosaur? Oh, that is such a cool story. Paleontologists in Switzerland found this crushed turtle. And when they looked at it, they found that it had been stepped on by a giant dinosaur. So the point of the story is there is a relationship between the poor squashed turtle and the big dinosaur who stepped on it. You suddenly have a bigger picture of the world. And this is what scientists are doing with these particles. You will know that I am a giant fan of the CMB. CMP, Cosmic Microwave Background. The true baby picture of the cosmos. You will remember that the CMB was discovered at Bell Labs, the telephone company, when Penzias and Wilson found an annoying buzz in their antenna. And when they looked, they realized it was microwave energy. Ancient microwave energy. In fact, ancient light, 13.8 billion years old that over the course of time had gone from a light frequency, photons, down to microwave energy and that was what they were hearing on their telephone circuits. After years of looking for details in the cosmic microwave background that could relate to our current universe, a brilliant astronomer called Tony Reedhead started to find details and later on satellites produced this the first baby picture of our universe. But the obvious question is, how does this relate to this? Is there a relationship between the early baby picture of the universe and the night sky or the universe that we see today? Well, this is the new research. If you go back to these particles, remember pop and pop that expanded, maybe their relationship stayed interlocked. So scientists are now looking at the relationship 
of galaxies. And if you draw lines between them, suddenly, uncannily, there seems to be a correlation back to the two particles. Let's try and make this a bit clearer. So if you can imagine, I'm oversimplifying here, but two particles pop into existence, boom, boom, become separated by expansion. These become galaxies, and the position of these galaxies in modern day observable universe mirrors where they were originally built. So a modern astronomy question is if you start looking at relationships between the space between galaxies, is it like the turtle and the dinosaur? Will it tell you a bigger picture? So the big picture we learn from the turtle and the dinosaur is the dinosaur stepped on the turtle because the turtle had just come out of the sea. So that meant the sea was near where the dinosaur lived. Suddenly you're getting a bigger picture, which is fascinating. And maybe we can use that data to look at our big picture of the universe. So that's enough of me waving my arms around. I get terribly enthusiastic by current science, and I think it's great. And I like to share it with you because you're great viewers, and the truth is out there. Yeah.